Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this transformation effect using a procedural method with material nodes. To get started, you first need to decide what object that you want to transform. Now you can use any object, but you want to make sure that the geometry is even throughout the entire thing. We're going to be using displacement later in this video, so having uneven geometry might make the displacement look a little bit weird in some areas. So with that said, I'm going to first go ahead and delete the default cube and then press shift A, we're going to add in a circle object. I'm going to quickly model a diamond and that's what we're going to use to display the transformation. I'm going to set the number of vertices right here in this menu down to 7. I'll scale it down a little bit, go into edit mode, and press F to fill in a face. Next, we're going to press E to extrude, extrude it down, scale it outwards, then press E to extrude again. We're going to go all the way down here, then press S and type 0. So now we have the shape of a diamond. From here, you can play around with it just to get the look that you want. I might scale that in just a little bit. Like I just said, we want even geometry. So we're going to press Control R. We'll add in like three or four loop cuts using the scroll wheel. I'm going to left click and then right click to place it right there. We'll do the same thing up here. Add in one loop cut, left click and then right click. We have a lot of duplicate vertices on the bottom right here. So I'm going to press A to select everything. Press M and go by distance. So now all of these vertices down here are now one vertex. Next up, let's drag it up a little bit. And another very important thing is the direction of the normals. Since we created a face and extruded downwards, the direction of the faces are actually pointed in the wrong direction. And we can see this if we turn on face orientation, you can see everything is red and the inside is blue. This is not what we want. We want it to be flipped. So again, press A to select everything and press Shift N to recalculate the normals. And now we have the correct normals pointed in the right direction. Next up, we're going to come over to the modifier tab, click add modifier, and let's add in a subdivision surface. And then we'll set it to simple, turn off optimal display so we can see the geometry. And let's drag the levels up until we get something that we like. Probably around six will look pretty good. So for this material, we're going to come up to the top window and split this view. And you can do that by dragging up to the top corner and dragging outwards. You can go over to the shading workspace right here, but I actually prefer using the vertical workspace. So that's what I'll do in this video. Then we're going to switch it over to the shader editor and then create a new material. This principled shader, we're not going to need that for now. We will add that in later. So go ahead and delete it. And then the first thing that we're going to do is add in a texture coordinate node. Go over to input and then add in a texture coordinate and we'll place it over on the left side. And if you're wondering what this box above the node is, this is actually an add-on called the node preview add-on. What this does is it allows you to see exactly what specific nodes are doing in your material. This can be very useful for previewing, textures, math nodes, all of that, and it works in real time. If you're interested in checking it out, I'll put an affiliate link down in the description. This will help support the channel and it'll help support the developer of the add-on as well. All right, so now what we need is an object for the start of the transformation. And to do this, I'm just gonna hold shift and then right click to place my cursor right at that corner. We're gonna press shift A and then add in a empty object, a plane axis. Scale it down a little bit and just drag it up so it's slightly above the mesh. So this is where it's going to start the transformation. And you can place this wherever you want on your object. I'm just going to place it at that top corner. So how this is going to work is we first need to add in another node. We're going to go over to converter and then add in a vector math node. Switch it from add over to length and then take the object, plug it into the vector. And then for the object, it's going to be the empty object. So using the eyedropper tool, select the empty. Now, if you have the node wrangler add on, that's a built in add on in blender that I highly recommend turning on. What this allows you to do is if you hold control shift and then left click, it'll automatically plug it into the material output. So you can see what this is doing. Now, if we press Z and go into the material preview, we can see that right there. So now if we drag the empty down, it's going to move that black spot to wherever the empty is. So that is how we're going to do it. Now to control this, we're going to need another node. Let's press shift a go over to converter and then add in a math node. We'll place that here. Switch it from add over to subtract. And now this bottom value controls the position of that link. So if we were to drag this down, you can see it expands across the entire mesh. And if we drag it up, it's going to look like that. 
And so that is how we're going to create the transformation. To control this a bit better, we can also add in a color ramp. We'll place that right here. And if we bring the white value closer, it's going to clamp down on that edge so it's not as strong of a gradient. I'm going to position this around a value of 0.4. Now for the color, we're going to press Shift A and re-add that principled shader. So go over to the shader and then add in a principled shader. And for this one, it's going to be the silver material that is first before it turns into the gold material. And for this, we're just going to bring the color a little bit lower so it's more of a grayish color and then bring the metallic up to 0.2 and then underneath the transmission we're going to set this all the way up to 1. To actually plug this in we're going to press shift a and add in a mix shader we'll place it down here and then this mask that we just created this is going to go into the top input where the factor is and then the principal shader is going to go into the bottom input. Let's press Shift D on this, and this is gonna be the gold. And for the base color, you can use the same hex color code if you want to. It is gonna be CBB055, and that just gives a nice gold color. This is gonna go into the top input of the mix shader. So again, this color ramp is only working as a mask between these two different materials. The white part is where the silver is, and then where the black parts are, that is gonna be where the gold is. So now if we take a look at this, you can see that in effect. So now the next question is, how do we get that band that goes across to give us that cool transition look? To do that, we're going to select this color ramp, press Control Shift D to duplicate it, but keeping that connection, that, that is a quick little tip right there. Down here, all we have to really do is just change this handle from white over to black, and then add in a new handle in the middle, and this is gonna be a white handle. So now if we take a look at this by control shift left clicking on it, we get that band right there. And you can control the thickness of this by playing around with this handle. So probably around 0.5 will look pretty good. Then what I'll do is I'll add in another handle, drag it over to the left and set this to white as well so that the gradient between these two colors is a little bit sharper. And for this, all we have to do is just do the exact same thing with another mix shader. If we press Shift D on this, this is going to go into the top input. Then this one down here is going to go into the factor. Then we'll select another principled shader, press Shift D, place it here. And then of course we can change the base color all the way down to black or whatever color that you want for that band. And take the output and plug it into the bottom input. Now if we select it, we can see this is the effect. And there we go, we now have that black band that goes across. And again, you can change this to be whatever color that you want, but I like a black band, so I'm gonna leave it right around there. For this though, I don't want there to be any transmission, so I'm gonna leave that down to zero. And then I'll also bring up the metallic all the way up to one, so we get a nice glossy look. Our material is looking pretty good so far, but how do we get that detail that you saw at the beginning of the video? That's basically adding a noise texture to the roughness, which gives us a really cool look. So let's add that in right now. I'm gonna press Shift A, go over to Input, and then add in a new texture coordinate node, and we'll place it over here. Next, we're gonna press Shift A, and this time we're gonna go over to Texture, and then add in a noise texture, we'll place that here. Take the object and plug it into the vector so we get the correct scale of this noise. And now if we preview this, here is what it looks like. We're gonna uncheck normalize and bring the detail all the way up to 15, the roughness 2.9, and now we're getting this really cool look. This is basically what the Musgrave looked like before it was removed from Blender and replaced with the noise texture. And finally, before we plug it into the principled shader, let's add in a new color ramp to control this a bit better then take the color and plug it into the roughness. Let's preview this by control shift left cl clicking on that and here is the result. So you can see here that the noise texture is controlling the glossiness of this metal and it's looking pretty good. If you think this is too strong of an effect, you can bring the blackness up a little bit and if I go all the way up to white, it's gonna be diffuse. If I go down, it's gonna be pure glossy. So somewhere around here or so, pretty dark color will look pretty good. And I really like this setup, so we're gonna use the exact same thing for the rest of the colors, the silver and then the black down here. So I'm just gonna select those three nodes, Shift D, place it down here, take the color and plug it into the roughness of the principal shader, and again, this is the silver. So if we select it, there we go. Now, I don't want it to be the same exact pattern. You can see here, 
the noise texture is exactly the same. So how do we fix that? Well, first, all we have to do is switch it from 3D over to 4D and just change the W to a different number. And now we get a different noise pattern. Another thing that I want to do is I want to give this less of a, an effect for this silver material. So for the, the value right here, we're actually gonna drag this up just a little bit so it has less of an effect, something like that. And then we'll do this one more time. We're gonna shift D this. This time we're gonna come over here. This is gonna plug into the roughness of the black band. And now if we preview this by selecting the mix shader, we can see it all together. That is looking pretty good, but another thing that I want to do is I want this to be stronger. So I'm gonna drag this all the way down to black, bring it forward as well so it's more glossy. Something like that will look pretty good. And there we go, the material is basically done. But there is one last thing that we need to do before we move on to the lighting, and that is to create the displacement along this band. And that's actually very easy to do. All we need is to take this color ramp, which is the band color ramp. If we select it, you can see this is the band color ramp. This is gonna be added to a displacement node. So let's press Shift A, go over to Vector, and then add in a displacement node. We'll place that right about here. We're gonna take the color, plug it into the height, and then the displacement is gonna go into the material displacement in our material output. Now, if we press Z and go into the rendered view, and also make sure that we select the mix shader, and then also make sure that cycles is selected because the displacement does not work in Eevee. So over in the render tab, make sure to switch it from Eevee over to cycles. You can see it's kind of working, but it's not that much of an effect. And the reason for that is over in the material settings right here in this material panel, the settings down here is set to bump only. We need to switch it over to displacement only or displacement and bump if you have some bump in your scene. Since I'm only using displacement, I'm gonna switch it over to displacement only. And now we can see it just went crazy. So first off the mid-level, we're gonna set that down to zero. And then the scale, we need to go much lower down to 0 0.05 and enter. And there we go, that looks a lot better. Let's also press Control A and apply the scale to this and that should also make it look a bit better. Now from here, all you really need to do is tweak the settings a little bit until you get the desired look. This is a little bit too strong, so I might bring the scale down to around 0.3. And there we go, we've now created the material and now let's animate this subtract node back over here. Drag this up a little bit. On frame one, we're going to drag this all the way to zero. Let's actually go into the material preview so it speeds up just a little bit. We're gonna want to set this subtract node to exactly where when it starts to appear. So let's zoom in on this position, drag it up, and then right there is when it starts to appear. So negative 0.15. Let's add in a keyframe by hovering over it and hitting I. And then we're gonna jump all the way over to frame 200 drag the subtract up until it reaches all the way to the end. So right about there or so, and then add in another keyframe. So here is the results. From the beginning, we play it, you can see it starts to appear, and then it goes all the way down to the bottom. All right, I've organized the nodes just a little bit so you can see the full setup. Here is where the gradient appears with the math node. Here is both the gold and silver materials plugged into the mix shader. And again, this is the mask between these two materials. Here is where the black band is, and that is also plugged into another mix shader. And then here is this material up there. Then of course, this black band is also plugged into a displacement, which is in the displacement material output. So there you go. If you wanna see the entire thing, it's right there. But for now, we're going to work on the lighting for the rest of the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and close off that window. We're not gonna need it anymore. For the lighting, I'm gonna press Shift A, add in a new plane object. This is gonna be the fill light. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit and place it somewhere around here. We're gonna create a new material, switch the surface from principled over to the emission shader and set the strength up to around five. We're gonna press Shift D on this, rotate it so it's facing this way. This is gonna be the key light, so we're gonna scale it down so it's more of a point. The strength of this is gonna be set to 15, but first create a new material by hitting the two button right there, switch it to 15. And then finally, we're gonna press Shift D. We're gonna rotate it behind the diamond, scale it along the X so it's a little bit skinnier, then also rotate it so it's flat like this and scale it up along the Z axis. 
this is gonna be a skinny light that's positioned behind the diamond. Now, one very important thing is I don't wanna see this in the render. I only want to see the lighting that it produces. And we can do that easily by jumping over to the object data panel. Underneath the visibility right here, turn off camera. So when we render it, it's gonna show up in the diamond and the reflection, but it's not gonna show up in the camera view. So now if we press Z and go into the render preview, here is the result that we get. A couple other things, I'm gonna jump over to the scene panel. We're gonna open up the color management, set the look to uh, AGX if it's not already there. And then the look right here, we're gonna go high contrast. This will give us a very high contrast look and that is looking pretty good. Next, we're gonna jump over to the world settings, set the strength of the world up to a value of four so it's a little bit brighter. And then also I'm gonna turn that off in the view so we don't actually see the background. So underneath the film, turn on transparency. Let's take a look at this now by jumping over to frame 80 or so. And that is looking pretty nice. Then all we have to do is position the camera in the front view. So I'm gonna hit one on the number pad, hit control alt numpad zero to snap the camera to place. And then you can select it, drag it backwards, and then place it how you want. Let's go ahead and hit F12 to do a quick render and I'll show you how to add in that background. The render has finished, so let's exit out of that and jump over to the compositing workspace. We're gonna click use nodes and then close off this panel by hitting N and then also close off this panel. We're not gonna need either of those. To see what we're doing, let's press Control Shift and left click on the render layer. This is gonna add in a viewer node and you can press V a couple times to bring the entire thing into view. So to add in a background, all you need is a color, mix, and then an alpha over node. Place that right here. Make sure the image is plugged into the bottom input, and then this top color is now the background of the image. So you can play around with this until you get something that you like. I found that a kind of a bluish color looked pretty good. And then also one more thing I'll show you in this video is how to create that vignette that you also saw in the beginning of the video. And that is very easy. All we need is a transform, a lens distortion. Then we're also gonna need a blur, Gaussian blur. So we'll just add in a blur. Set the distort to one. Take the image, plug it into the bottom input. Switch it over to fast and set both the Y, once relative is checked, set the Y and X to around 15%. Then plug it in by adding in a color, mix, and then a mix node. Take the image and plug it into the bottom input. Once this, you can see that it blurred at the edges and now, and now all we need to do is switch it from mix to multiply to get rid of the white values. And there we go, we now have a vignette and the factor controls how strong that is. Probably around a 0.5 will look decent. But there we go, from here all you need to do is render your animation. Now, if you're wondering how I created the multiple objects in a row, basically all I did is just added a new object, use the exact same material, but I also duplicated the material so it doesn't change the timing of the first one. And then with the subtract node selected, you can play around with the position of the keyframes. So right when the top object finishes transforming, the bottom object will start to transform. And I did this for all of the objects in a row. For the little drop that you saw, basically that is just a icosphere that's scaled up just a little bit. And then I animated the position of it. So it started at the top, I animated it coming down. Then I moved it to the bottom of the diamond, animated that going down, and then so on. If you're also wondering how to rotate the object, all you need to do in order to get that done is press N and then underneath the rotation right here, you can add in a new driver. You can do this by typing hashtag frame divided by, let's go with like 50 or so. And the division number is how fast it's gonna rotate. And now if we play this, you're gonna see it's starting to rotate. If you want it to go slower, you're gonna wanna set the number higher to let's say like 80 or so and it's gonna rotate a bit slower. But there we go, guys. That is how you create a really nice transition effect in Blender. Thank you very much for watching, and if you created something cool, I would love to see it, so make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you're new here, consider subscribing so you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.